And welcome to another episode of the awesomeness of Marriage Matters. I'm Andy B and I have a cold. And I'm Joe, and I've also got a bit of a cold. Actually, my cold's kind of gone, but it, I sound bad. <laughs> so I've got a little drink to keep me going. Um, you're very welcome to join us as we take another look at something awesome. Yes. Which we'll come on to. But the best thing you can do to stay in touch and never miss a thing that we do is to like us on Facebook. You can subscribe to our YouTube channel, although we're also on Vimeo now as well. Um, you can even find us on Tumblr and on Twitter. We can tweet along. Da, 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 da. <laughs> no. Without that. No? Too much? <laughs> Too much. We're not doing that sort of tweeting on Twitter. Um, and uh, the best thing, of course, is for you to sign up to Berry Bites, which is our weekly newsletter. And it's Berry Bites with a Y... <laughs> why not? Because why not? <laughs> yes. Yeah, so this, this. What are we covering this week, uh, dear? Well, it's let's get physical, and it's part two. Um, it's all about sex in marriage, um, intimacy, and we figured we couldn't cover it. There's a lot to cover in in, in one, and we're actually going to do part three, aren't There'll we? There'll be a part three. So we're focusing on the good things in marriage. So um, in with sex, um, because so t- sometimes it, we just look at the bad stuff, don't we? And so sex in marriage is God's best for us, and it's a normal part of life. So I thought I'd recap on what we talked about in part one. Good, because I've forgotten what we did. And then we'll take it from there so we don't don't repeat ourselves. So what did we do? So we we talked about the importance of talking about sex openly and allowing our children to ask questions and let them talk about it. You mean like a normal conversation? Yeah, absolutely. It's it's a normal part of life. Yes. Um, We talked about the fact that films have sex scenes which aren't particularly helpful. And we... There's a warning there, really, because you can't unsee what you've seen. No. Um, and we also think that films can sometimes give sex a bad name. So um, just a warning there. You mean there. like the Hollywood sex scene where both people have never met each other have, you know, amazing yeah. kind of orgasmic sex. It's like, no, <laughs> oh, yeah. no, sorry, no. No. Um, Andy shared a negative experience uh, about sort of a six-month period where we didn't have sex and, um, you know, we didn't do any kissing, but reassured us with the fact that we will have hard times, we will have difficulties, but we can get through it. And we've been married now um, 25 years, haven't we? Or as you said in our first episode, we've managed to last, or you've managed (laughs) to last 25 years. (laughs) Yeah, but we can get through the bad patches. Um, We (laughs) stress the importance of kissing. Um, in marriage and the importance of um, how we feel emotionally and mentally towards sex. Um, sex isn't just for having babies. No. Nope. Um, and we thought practice makes perfect, or I should say it makes it better. Yes. So the more you stay with the same person and keep practicing, the better it becomes. Um, and God created us a man, one man and one woman to be get together in marriage. And, and so sex is clearly important. Yep. Um, but sex can be done wrong in marriage as well yes. as, as outside of marriage. So, um, you know, and it's interesting, the Bible talks about it's a sin if you're getting it wrong. It's against your own body. So mm. we'll, we will talk about that a bit more probably. Um, the Bible tells us not to give up having sex um, for a long period of time. But it's not a baseball bat to force <laughs> your other half no. to have sex with you. No, not at all. And we thought it was interesting how the devil tries to, to make you have um, sex before marriage and then once you're married, seems to do everything to stop you. So we thought yes. that's an interesting one. We also said not to get lazy in marriage. Um, so, you know, we shouldn't make sex a low priority. So it's something we need to sort of plan uh, and make sure we do. Prioritise. You can plan for spontaneity <laughs> because what you can do is create a time that's blocked off yeah. in order that you can be spontaneous. Yeah, absolutely. Nothing wrong with that. No. And then finally, we basically looked at the benefits of sex. Now, I talked about how it gave me a clearer mind, more confidence. I felt more self-worth um, yeah. and, and valued. And, Andy, you talked about that you didn't struggle so much, yeah. uh, and particularly when you look and see, not your your fault, that you might see scantily yeah. clad women or something. So, real benefits, lots of good stuff in our It last sounds session. like we talked about a lot last we did, time. We? And we really, really <laughs> did, which is why there's now a part two, and there'll be a part three after this as well. Yeah. But also, what we're going to do, this part two, let me just give you a taster, frequency of sex, because we promised we would talk about yes. that expectations and false messages yes. that we might bring into the marriage advantages of healthy sex life and in the garden of eden adam and eve were naked they didn't have any clothes on no 
we're going to talk about that. And I had to think over the week about my favourite memory of our experience of sex, so I will share that as well. Awesome, because I don't know what that is yet. <laughs> so that's quite good. Should we take a little break? Yeah, absolutely. In 2018, Joe and I were full-time children's ministers, loving what we were doing and wanting to share our resources freely with others to use. Scroll on two years to 2020 and we'd finally launched our berrybunch.family website. Chock full of resources. It was a bit embarrassing when we had one video, but we've now got nearly 500 videos for you to use, stream, share and download with 900 posts, all full of information that you are free to use in your situation, whether that's a church, a family or just for your own personal use. We've been asked to do all sorts of things. We've made logos for somebody who wanted a new logo for their blog. We've been asked to create children's discipleship group. So we've done that. We've been asked to create a book about broken dreams and hope, and we've done that as well. We love creating resources that are relevant to your situation. So get in touch with what your needs are. Our vision and our passion is to create material that is family safe or free for all, wherever you are in the world. And that is exactly what we do. So if you want to help us continue to do that, or if you want us to make something specific for your situation, then get in touch. Welcome back to the meaty section of Marriage Matters. The meaty section. Why does it always sound better with a cold? <laughs> it sounds cool, doesn't it? I can't get that low normally. Yeah. So we are looking at Let's Get Physical, Sex in Marriage. Um, this is part two. And we're going to start with frequency of sex in marriage. What are your thoughts on this, Andy? I have a few. Mm-hmm. Do you want me to share them? I would like you to, oh, yes. okay, that's fine. So, frequency of sex. And I think the first thing to say is um, the right number of times to have sex a week is whatever's right for you mm. in your situation, given your circumstance. Um, factor in things like age, mm. workload, mm. Um, small children. We've been through that. We've now got mm. older teenagers. That's a different season. Um you can't quite get it on quite so easily in the lounge when they're coming through for their 14 snack of the night. So you have to be a bit more uh, creative. Um, so there isn't a, a proper frequency. The, the story that comes to mind is of a uh, man and wife on their wedding day are going from the ceremony to their honeymoon and they get involved in a tragic accident and this man's wife wasn't killed but she was paralysed, I think, from the neck down, if memory serves. So they never got to the honeymoon. So they never got to have sex for the first time. They never got to have sex in their marriage. It was no less a marriage before God. And this mm. guy looked after his wife until she died, which was many, many years, many decades. He honoured that commitment to her. And mm. um, there is no right frequency of having sex in the marriage. That's really important to say. Um, pain, illness, sickness, there's all sorts of things that can get in the way. Mm. Um, being forced away from each other. I mean, what's the American military? It's a year at a time. The English military, it's three or six months, I think. Mm. So you can't say, well, this is what you should be. And if it's mm. not, then it's not good enough because that's not right or fair. So the right frequency is the right frequency for you. You have to balance. Um, one of you is probably going to be wanting to have physical intimacy more than the other. Mm. We think of that quite often. It's termed as the high drive spouse and the low drive spouse. Um, somewhere in the middle of those two, maybe if one of you wants mm. it every day and one of you wants it once a week, then somewhere in the middle, you know, that probably works better. Marriage is about compromise at the end of the day. And this is another area to compromise as well. Mm. Um, I guess an average marriage, an average situation, average health, um, you've got contact with each other all the time because you're not away, you know, once every three or four days, I guess. But again, mm. don't take that as well, it's every five days, it's not good enough or it's once every two days, that's too much. It, it really doesn't work that way. Mm. Um, so you, you need to balance for your situation, for your marriage, for your situation. It's going to change and it's going to change over time. Mm. When you're 50, you haven't got as much energy for anything as you do when you're 20. Um, I'm not 50 yet, but Joe tells me she hasn't got as much energy in her 50s as she did in her 20s. So these are going to change, you know. Um, I do know, however, I've read enough accounts from other marriage bloggers who've got older where the frequency may drop off, but the intensity kind of increases because now they've got more time. Mm. So rather than having sex and it's, you know, half an hour, and now it's like five hours of, of foreplay and food and dinner, and it's much more protracted because they can. So it's mm. going to change how it looks as much as how often it is. 
Yeah, I mean, we talked, gave some Bible scriptures last time, and one of them is about not um, sort of stopping having sex um, unless you want to have time of prayer and things. So I suppose what we're talking about is uh, is, is healthy, isn't it? To yeah. choose to, together how long and in, in the different seasons. Um, but the, but be careful that you don't sort of deliberately don't do it or use ill health or don't whatever as an excuse. Or, or, yeah, go, don't get legalistic or religious about it. Um, don't use it an excuse or a way of controlling your spouse. I think just on this one, uh, I, I, was, I was saying to Joe, why is it that God wants sex within a marriage? What is it about a husband and a wife and sex within the confines of a marriage before God that God sees as his best? What mm. What is it about that that the Bible goes on about it so clearly that Paul in his teachings made such a point? And I think one of them is sex is never to be used as a weapon against each other. It's a, it's a weapon of warfare against the enemy to bind mm. you together as a couple. But don't ever use it as a baseball bat to get what you want or to stop somebody doing something it's not about that god's design for sex is to bring you together it enables you to come together in a way that you couldn't do otherwise as a husband and a wife so mm. don't flip that on its head and well we're not having it enough therefore it's not good enough that that's not that's mm. not the point that's the pharisee version but it's interesting the scripture tells us actually it's the one sin that if you don't do it correctly or if it's lust or mm. it's done incorrectly or it's become, it's sinful you're actually doing it to yourself aren't you yeah. it's a sin that you're actually doing to your own body so if you do decide to use sex for all the wrong reasons you're actually shooting yourself in the foot you're literally doing mm. it against yourself which is interesting isn't it yeah oh, it is mm. it's not just the other person no, no. yeah so frequency, we're saying, you know, really it's down to you as a couple. Pray yeah. together, think about it, you know, uh, to do everything to the glory of God, isn't it? And it's. A, it, I do know yeah. of a Christian woman whose name I can't remember. I can't find her website. Oh. But she did a study. Now, it was for a book she was writing, mm -hmm. but I, I don't have a problem with the reasons why she did it. But she said to her husband, right, unless it's my period, I want to have sex with you once a day. And I want to do this for a year. I think it was a year and see what wow. happens to our relationship because she was really interested mm. Um, she was kind of a bit into the sort of science and the research. So they had sex every day. Was it a year? Was it six months? It doesn't really matter. Mm. For a long period of time, um, they had sex every day, except for, you know, was it three, four days a month when she was on a period, therefore they didn't do that. Mm. And they did it for a year. And she said, some days it's like, oh, okay, let's kind of have sex then. Here's the really interesting thing. When that experiment came to an end, and she was interested to see what was happening afterwards, it was the first day afterwards, and they didn't have sex together. And they're both, well, I don't feel very close to you now. Aww. And I think that's interesting yeah. because that's what sex does. And it's not about the frequency. It was an experiment, kind of. Mm. It's a healthy experiment. Um, but it was a good thing to try. But it was what happened as soon as they stopped mm. that daily sex. It was interesting. Yeah. So if you want closeness in your relationship with your, your partner then, you know, sex is, is the way to go, isn't it? It's a very uh, good way. a good way, if you can. I mean, obviously, there are other things that can be done to help you stay close. Yeah. But it, it does bring closeness. Yeah. Brilliant. Um, so moving on to our next subject that we're trying to cover is is the expectations of sex. Oh, um, wow. Sort of the, the things that we bring into the marriage, the false messages, I suppose. Mm. Um, what have you got to say about that? Oh, plenty. <laughs> I've got plenty to say about everything. <laughs> You're not learning this about me. Yeah. I think even he's, whoever's watching this knows I've got lots to say about lots of things. What's the question? Um, false messages okay. that we bring into a marriage. So I think there are things, I mean, we talk about sexual baggage that you bring into your marriage, mm. and that's an obvious one. If you've been having sex before marriage, either um, with the person you go on to marry or with other people, then that's something you need to get and deal with. Mm. But that's an obvious one. There's other messages. Mm. There's the purity culture in America, which caused so much damage. The heart of it was just keep yourselves pure until you get married. But mm. then what happened is off the back of that were all these people getting married, and especially the women, because it was so heavy on the, on, the, on the wives. They saw sex as dirty and wrong Aww. because they've been taught it's evil, it's wrong. Well, yeah, outside of God's plan for a marriage, mm. yes, it's not God's best. But the problem is if you go too heavy on that and you become legalistic, when you get married, mm. you see it as dirty and wrong. And well, now you can. But they couldn't mentally make that shift and it was really painful. So I'm kind of glad mm. that purity culture, is, as good as the heart was at one level, it caused so much damage because it was a really powerful message mm. that made sex this thing that's so disgustingly off, uh, dirty and off limits that even within a context of a marriage, mm. making that shift is really hard when, you, when you've had that you know, rammed at you. So you know, don't mm. think it's okay to, sex, to have sex out of marriage. God's got a plan. Husband, wife, marriage, sex. Right, there mm. you go. But you can, you can train people the wrong way too. 
Yeah. You can make it such a taboo subject that they're so frightened and terrified of it that, you know, it, it can be a real issue. Yeah. And that's not God's plan. It's not designed to, to tie you down into feeling heavy and dirty. It's supposed to be liberating and tie you together as a couple. Yeah, you, you said something about um, there might be simple things, and there are the obvious ones, sex before marriage or experiences where you've seen your parents yeah. um, act in a particularly bad way if there's been infidelity in, in your home life. or We're or, both from divorced families, yeah. and divorce was a word that we used for a while until we realised that we really need to get rid of that word because yeah. it wasn't healthy. Yeah, so we, you, you bring uh, those attitudes, but um, is there something you've picked up along the way yeah. um, from, from films or your expectations of it being all, you know, perfect and... <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, because they do that in films. They make it look so I, good and so... Can I just say, if if your um, idea of what sex is like is from a film, you're going to be really heavily de- disappointed. I can pretty much yeah. guarantee it. Sex is so much better than what you see on the film as portrayed. And, uh, we've we've found ourselves laughing, haven't we, because it's got really... You know, sometimes you think, what? what why do... What sex? You know, because we've laughed, haven't we? We've been laughing. Oh, Something's gone wrong or fallen over or... I, well, I might have hit you in the face by accident or something. Yeah, cramp. <laughs> <laughs> cramp in the leg cramp yeah that uh, happens and that doesn't happen in the film but you watch it, it in the Hollywood and it I, really no yeah. N- no but it brings you closer together that's the point isn't it when you know you sort of muddle through together and you learn together <laughs> no you find a way yeah so that was yeah bringing sort of expectations other in. stuff things yeah. like um, restricting sex so it's mm. okay a bit of a stereotype but it helps me paint the picture and it's the gatekeeping wife it's the one that well if you do these you can have sex now that's evil that's horrible if you're using the sex to get what you want as a wife or as a husband mm. but let's stick with this stereotype image for a minute as a wife if sex is what you're using well you can have sex if you do this and that you're not loving your husband and a husband that says well you need to have sex with me or I won't do these things mm. it's just as wrong one isn't worse than the other but the stereotype it's one of those things yeah. the gatekeeper wife that but that uses her body in sex as a way of controlling a husband and th- this is just not right you know take the bins out every day well you didn't take the bins out for one of the days you know god doesn't yeah. trick us into things and you know we shouldn't be tricking each other into bed or out of bed that, that's just not helpful yeah and here's off the back of that one um masturbation um can be an issue for for men and women but here's the thing about that one When you get married, the only person that can sexually satisfy you in a relationship that now has been opened up to needing sexual satisfaction is your wife, in my Mm. case, and for Joe, her husband, and me. Yeah. So, you know, don't think, oh, well, just go and sort yourself out. I've heard women talking about it. Oh, well, I'd rather he watches pornography. It gives me a night off. You know, apart from the fact that, no, you shouldn't be causing your brother to stumble, we'll just push that to one side for a minute. Mm. The only person your husband could get that satisfaction from is you. The fact he desires you is a good thing. Mm. So you end up in these crazy situations where people have just gone so off. It's like, there's, there's so much to deal with. Yeah. So, yeah, expectations. We're not even scratching the surface. I know, we're it's like, yeah, we'll here. just breeze across that one. I'm sure we could get, we'll talk about that a lot, couldn't we? Um, and the only other subject that we wanted to sort of look at was in the Garden of Eden, Adam and Eve, before the fall, before everything went I had this shaped. idea. What did you Well, know? the Adam and Eve, this was my we idea. We talked about this. Oh, what? No, well, apart from the fact we're going to talk about it. <laughs> so it struck me that um, Adam and Eve yeah. were naked in the Garden of Eden before yeah. the fall. Yeah. Um, Eve then goes off, gets tempted by um, the devil, eats the, eats the, well, we call it the apple, it's the fruit. Yeah from the tree Adam then does the same and now they're living in sin it's the fall and then they get embarrassed about how the fact Mm. they've got no clothes on God makes them uh, clothes out of fig leaves and they're Mm. covered again but there's this period of time when it was good when they were naked and and, and this is something I've met a few people um, I've not really met any men that say this but I've met enough women over my time that say this um, in various kind of contexts when they're actually happy to talk about it work in a factory you'll get some honest opinions <laughs> but they have this thing where well I won't let my husband see me you know before I get my makeup on in the morning they have this false image mm. and it's just you know be honest and real before yourselves then your marriage will grow yeah I mean yeah being being naked um, and it, when we do feel sometimes a bit self-conscious perhaps yeah. if we've lost if we've, we've put on a bit of weight or yeah. we, we all feel uncomfortable with our body sometimes yeah, yeah. but um, that's the beauty of an intimacy and, and, yeah. and the sex and and and, and that's why over time it becomes easier because you get used to each other's bodies yeah. and how we look and stuff like that, that. vulnerability is a really good yeah. important thing yeah vulnerability is good in yeah, a marriage and that is you can't get any more vulnerable I suppose than naked because that's what they say no. isn't it if you want to get if you want to be confident when you're standing in front of a crowd of people they say pretend they're naked or something isn't it yeah. 
<laughs> I'm not sure that's going to help in this one. But nakedness does, you know, it, it's, it does it's, help. Um, no clothes in the way makes sex a lot easier. Let's be honest. <laughs> that's true. It's a very practical tip there. <laughs> Absolutely. Handy practical tips. Should we take a break? We, I think so. So, endurance. Wait, no, first, I'm Stephen. I'm Nathan. And we're brothers, actually. In case you hadn't noticed. Yeah. I mean, I know the much more uh, masculine physique on this side may have thrown you off. Yeah, I'm actually older. Yeah. Taller. Stronger. Fitter. Maybe. Oh, definitely. (laughs) Anyway, that's not the point of endurance. Uh, The point is spiritual training, not physical. Yep, yep. Not that we, obviously, we don't compete that much. Nor spiritually. You shouldn't compete spiritually either. No. No. But I'm better than you. <laughs> Don't know what to say to that. There is no no answer. So the point of endurance is all about one Tim- the out each other. All about one Timothy four verse eight, which says, "Physical training is good, but training for godliness is much better." And so it was an idea, which I think it was my idea actually, wasn't it? It was a joint effort. There's no I in team. Yes, yeah, so it was definitely my idea. Yeah, and um, the idea being that we have to. Well, I was challenged because basically I enjoy exercise. I was doing lots of weight training, lots of running, and I was getting a bit mm, obsessed. You were failing to uh, train spiritually. Yeah, yeah, you could say that I was idolizing physical fitness rather so than. So we created endurance to help him learn better how and to so balance I... spiritual and physical training. Yeah, basically. Okay. Because I've already cracked it. No. 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 Got a long way to go yet. Yeah. So go check us out. I can see the light near the end of the tunnel. I mean, you, you're way behind. And we're back for tips and resources. Yes. Tips and no. no. <laughs> I'll just end up coughing. So tips and resources. To be honest, we're doing the same as last week. Not because we're lazy, but because these are really good resources. So in no particular order, we have husband and wife team, um, CJ Mahaney and Carolyn Mahaney. I think I misquoted Carolyn last week. Okay. She does a thing about a jam sandwich. Okay, they call it jelly and whatever in America, but, you know, Mm. we'll forgive them. Um, but yeah, so she basically, the, the wife was saying, how, what do I do? I can't do everything in the house and we're not having sex. And she basically said, well, look, just don't worry about a five course meal for your husband. Just make him a, a jam sandwich and then <laughs> take him to bed. Um, and she also in a conference, which I slightly misquoted, but not deliberately. Um, she was uh, asked about what she could do. She was on a panel at a conference. What could you do to support your husband? And effectively what she said was, well, go make love to him and that will help him. Mm. And um, there was kind of laughing and stuff. And uh, I think that's quite valid. Um, it makes you feel 10 foot tall when your wife wants to make love to you. It's, it just makes you feel good. Mm. Uh, Hot, Holy and Humorous by Jay Parker. A really good book. If you want some tips on... I mean, I think I've read the book now and it's really good because what she does is just takes it really basic like you've never met a man before and you're a mm. wife and you don't know quite what to do and she takes you through everything. Um, she kind of goes through the physiology and the biology and um, how it works and all that kind of stuff. We haven't even talked about mood and feelings and how that affects sex. That'll be part <laughs> three or part 18 at this rate. <laughs> and the last one is a bit of a study book because it is a study book. It's The Message of the Song of Songs by Tom Gledhill. Um, he really looks through very well at uh, The Song of Songs and mm. why is it that my wife's teeth having pairs are good? Mm. And why is her neck like a tower or something and... Mm. it goes through all that it's very yeah. good there's some fantastic resources there same as yes. we had last week um, and I'm sure there are others as, um, you know, other books um, to, just to find something Christian to help you on, on your travels again I would say the same um, praying and talking together about what your needs are what your expectations yes. are um, when we first met and I know we said this in a different episode we had a dog cushion where we shared our poured our heart out the and dog cushion was just a really large cushion with yeah, a picture of a dog yeah um, but you know being honest about how you feel and what you expect what you've been through um, I think we shared and opened up about 
our experience, our previous experiences with other relationships as well. So that's kind of helpful. Put it out there, get that honesty time. And that helps a relationship, doesn't it? Yeah. And, and, and of course, talking about sex. We've said the importance of talking about sex. Well, you need to talk about sex with each other. Um, I know some people prefer to do it in the dark or, or maybe they want the lights on. Some people have mirrors, don't they, and things. And some people would like absolutely we, hate that. We lived in a house that had, well, it was mirrors on a wardrobe, but the, every every door on the wardrobe was mirrored. And yeah. I, I never was comfortable with no. that. <laughs> no. And I think sometimes, well, we, you know, candles can be nice, candle lit yeah. sort of thing. But we it's have about battery candles. Yeah. Much safer. So much safer because we did have an incident where we got <laughs> into things. And, okay, um... here's a tip and resource. <laughs> yes. If you're having. Um, passionate time with your other half and um, you have a candle you know how it says candles can spontaneously like erupt into yeah. this massive thing we did have a candle that while we were otherwise engaged uh, it did suddenly go from a little tiny light and the whole thing lit up that stopped uh, us in our tracks well it did because I had an alarm clock and basically waxed it over the top because it was terrifying it was yeah. another like, woof and that's off it went yeah that, 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 that spoils the mood a bit didn't it they did a little bit it wrecked me alarm <laughs> yeah. clock as well yeah top tip maybe get some battery pad um candles if you're you know going to be busy <laughs> as romantic as candles are yeah we talked about things getting in the way like cramp and whatever but yeah, <laughs> yeah that's candles one. suddenly going up yeah so pray together talk it through share be open um you know and be sensitive to each other's needs yes. and things yeah should we take a little break yeah and we'll come back again i was asked to record a video and write a book by a friend he'd seen so many people with broken dreams just hopeless about life they were living and the life before them. So I wrote a book. It's my very first book. It's called Broken Dreams and Hope. It's based on my own life, some struggles that I've had. And the fact that through those struggles, however bad they were, whether they were caused by me or caused against me, throughout all of that, there was still hope. Let me just read a few things that people who've read this book already have said. It's a page turner, with each chapter leaving you wanting to read just one more. You gave the reader motivation to look up and grab the hand that can lift you up on your feet and walk you through life's muddy mire. And I love the way you spoke of hurt and abuse but never going into details that would have robbed the reader of their own inward pains and ability to take hold of the Lord's extended hand, the hand that will never let go. Broken Dreams and Hope is a book I wrote because... I know what it is to have broken dreams. I know what it is to feel hopeless. But I also know what it is to have hope. Because that hope has a name. And that name is Jesus Christ. Welcome back to our takeaway. This is the last part of Marriage Matters. The takeaway. <laughs> For, we're talking oh, that about, sounds good. The takeaway. Let's get physical part two. Now, we've talked about frequency of sex. We've talked about, oh, let me see what we talked about, expectations that have come into a marriage. Baggage. False. Yeah, baggage. And we, we talked about in the Garden of Eden, um, Adam and Eve were naked. And we talked about in and around advantages of a healthy sex life. So those yes. kinds of things we've covered. And some of the things that might get in the way. Yes. So what are you taking away from this? What am I taking away? That I haven't talked about something that was quite important that we're going to cover in the next episode, <laughs> but I want to cover in this episode a little bit now. Is. <laughs> <laughs> okay. There's, there's this thing about, um, and it isn't really a stereotype. It is kind of... A, there's a misunderstanding that a wife says, well, I need to be in the mood before I can be intimate. Mm. Um, and we're not talking about forcing someone to have sex, okay? We've made that so abundantly clear. Never, ever force someone to have sex. That's always wrong. But there's this thing that, you know, the wife's got to be in the mood before she's ready for sex. But here's the thing about that is most of the time that's a load of rubbish because mm. actually the wife will be getting into the mood through the process of lovemaking. Mm. Um, and this is something Jay Parker's picked up a lot is that women think they've got to be in the mood before they start so because they're not in the mood they won't start but you're not going to get in the mood until you start so until mm. you start you won't be in the mood and it's this you know vicious circle so um, again never ever ever try and think we've got to force sex no. but at the same time if you start walking in a particular way it'll improve your gait and if you do something you'll start to follow and actually mm. if you start to go down the road of making love you'll, it'll, it'll help and when we first got married what is it you did from Stormy O'Martin's advice 
about when you were in the mood? What did she say to go and do? When, you, when your husband says, can we have sex now? What did she say? Uh, I can't remember. Oh, fantastic. <laughs> what? So, so the advice that you then shared with me later was, go off to the bathroom, go and pray, and pray for yourself to want to make love to your husband and then come uh, back and make yeah. love to him. Well, I was going to say pray, but I couldn't remember specifically from that book. Well, it was yeah. a prayer thing. I guess that's what, I, that, yeah, always pray, whatever you do, pray. And, yeah. yeah, and it does make a difference, doesn't it? Yeah. Absolutely. So don't let feelings, this is the thing, don't let yeah, feelings guide true. actions in your life because mm. feelings can be a useful thermometer, but then they're a bit useless after that. Yeah. It's like hindsight, you know, mind you, when you banged it, great, thanks for that. Yeah. But in the same context, if you're waiting as a woman to be in the mood, you might be waiting a long time, and that can be one of the easiest barriers to fix um, and actually, you know, make mm. the efforts towards making love, and all of a sudden you're more interested in making love. Yeah. Would that be true? Yeah, I mean, there's a balance as well there because I mean there are feelings do come into it. So what, if you've, headaches, you've been tiredness, really, nausea. If you've been really nasty to your other half all day long, and which then, obviously never and happens, then, and then expect it, it's like well you need to sort that problem out before. <laughs> don't, I don't know if you can have the phrase "don't make love angry" or something like you don't drive no. angry, you know? <laughs> but I don't think you would. You wouldn't do it, would no. you? If you were angry, and that's the thing, isn't it? Mm. Um, so yeah, you, the emotions do play a part, and you do need to make sure you're right with each other. But yeah, don't. So what's my takeaway? Your takeaway. Yeah, you said that, and then I went off on a tangent. Oh, right, I thought that was your takeaway, that we no. ought to talk more about that. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, what am I taking away? I think it's the reminder that there's an awful lot of obstacles to um, being intimate with your uh, with your spouse in mm. a marriage. But actually, it's reminded me of God's best plan. I mean, I know we talk about God's best, but it's reminding me that God has a best plan. And actually, it's a good idea to try and get there. And like anything, you can kind of be kind of nudged away from it without really yeah. being fully aware that you're moving away from a good place so mm. you know take stock have a thing and make sure that things that aren't happening that there's actually a good reason why they're not happening mm. rather than you've just fallen out of the habit yeah point but what was your answer to last week's question that yeah, i can't remember last week you asked me what was the best experience that we'd had of sex just in our being marriage clear, i wasn't after you know gratuitous details. details no this is a pg well semi pg semi pg uh, and I thought about it. And I thought, um, and apparently it was my idea to have sex in the garden, wasn't it? But obviously in our own garden, in a private place. Uh, and so one of the houses that we've had, but there was a little, we t- we checked Very it out. Secret. Well, I actually checked it out, didn't I? Yeah. I, did a, I did a recce of the situation, looked around to see if no neighbours could see us and people from within here, the house. Just to be clear. Eh? It was very private. Yeah, absolutely. And I just, I found that kind of exhilarating, exciting. Yeah, it felt yeah. like a little bit naughty. I mean, I wouldn't go out and about in because it's, it's, it's actually criminal against the law. <laughs> We're not talking about voyeurism. Let's just be really, no, really no. clear here because that's wrong. No, I couldn't do that. But it was kind of a little bit, felt a little bit naughty, a bit exciting, a bit different. Um, at the time, the children were a bit younger, weren't they? So we could get away with it. I'm not. It would be a bit more difficult as the kids were We're older. actually back in a house with a very private garden, but it's more of a challenge. Yeah. Um, so I found that yeah, quite exciting. That yeah, it was, Little you know, it was just crazy. But I found that quite exciting. We told um, you this was real talk. Yeah. And the other one, I had actually two, actually. Oh, <laughs> you know, when we go to bed early and we like either watch a film or we play, play, play yeah, games, yeah. play cards or something. We play a lot then, of gym rummy. And then in between, we might have a, you know, a, a session. And then I get very excited if we can do it two or three times. It's like, whoa, whoa look, look at us. You know, do you know what I mean? We're not like too we, old yet. You know, look, and it's almost like, oh, let's do it again. <laughs> let's just, just to get. But it's like a long protracted time. It's a period of time. Maybe go to bed early, seven, eight, nine. And then it's sort of, it's gone midnight, isn't it? It's a long yeah. sort, of, sort of time period. But it's kind of quite exciting to sort of play a game, have sex, and then carry on and then, have another yeah, have yeah. another go so, so there you <laughs> I go like that. i wasn't expecting that either don't worry it's not just you but yeah you asked me asked well me. i did but we also want to have real talk because the thing yeah. is about um marriage in general there's there's so many lies around there's so much opposition to marriage there's so yeah. many reasons why it can fall apart and be difficult and mm. you know if we're not honest about our marriage then we can't help you guys get your marriages better yeah. and that includes a little bit of vulnerability on our part yeah. um, and i think that's important so yeah there you go so it's good to talk about sex, um, um, but we don't need to be g- graphic and things like that. No. Or no, and like we say in films, you shouldn't be. We don't really want to see uh, it, see it, but it's good to talk about it because it's it's part of life, isn't it? And it's a good, it is. it's good. It ain't a big deal, but we make it a big deal. So we're trying to make it not a big yeah. deal, and we're trying to make it not a big deal by talking it for four straight episodes. So having done part, part one, this is part two. There's going to be a part three, and I've already said to Joe there's a part four to this, <laughs> which will fe- finish off our season of uh, of episodes. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Because this is such a contentious issue, yeah. and it really shouldn't be. This is God's 
best for humanity mm. is a husband and a wife enjoying a relationship together. Mm. And we always focus on the best that God would want for us. It's not going to be everyone's experience. We've had some really bit bad times and difficult mm. times, but some good times. So what is God's best? Don't look at what you need to try and avoid because you'll fall over your feet. Yeah. What is God's best? That's what we should be mm. aiming for. Yeah. That's a good so, place to end, isn't it? Yeah. So there you go. <laughs> Feel free to comment, talk, whatever. Yeah. You can private messages on the website and all sorts of places. And um, yes, thank you for joining us for another episode of Marriage Matters. And next week will be more, because I wanted to talk about more about moods and feelings. Brilliant. And all sorts of things. So come back next week for another session of Marriage Matters. Let's get physical part three, and then part four the week after that. <laughs> uh, was there anything I was supposed to say at the end? Uh, no, just my brain's for, gone no, now. Thanks for watching and see you next time. Thanks for watching and see you next time. Is that it? <laughs> Bye for now. Bye for now. <laughs>